Hello! In this video, we're going to be going over how you can create an animation blueprint for your character so that you can replace the default third person mannequin with your own custom character. By the way, I've started this project in the default Unreal Engine 5 third person template and I've imported my own third person character which we're going to be setting up in this video. You can get characters from websites like Mixamo or the Unreal Engine Marketplace. To get started, you want to open up your content drawer and find the folder of the character you want to create the animation blueprint for. So I've imported my own Spider-Man character, so I'm going to create an animation blueprint for this character. The first thing we want to do is just right click, go to animation, then go to legacy and select blend space 1D, then select the skeleton you want to create the blend space for, and just call this whatever your character is called, blend space 1D. So I'll call this Spider-Man blend space 1D. Then if I double click and open this up, we want to go to access settings and go to the horizontal axis and here under name, give this a name of speed. And we're going to see that this goes from a value of zero to a value of a hundred. Find your character's idle animation and just position this where the speed is zero. Then if you find your character's walking animation and position this where the speed is around 50, then find your character's running animation and position this where the speed is 100. If you press the control button on your keyboard, you can preview what animation your character will play depending on their speed. So when my character has a speed of zero, they'll play their idle animation. And when my character has a speed of 100, they'll play their running animation. We can save and close this. Next, if we go back to our content drawer, we are now ready to create our character's animation blueprint. To do this, if we just right click, go animation, then select animation blueprint, select our character that we want to create the animation blueprint for, and I'll just call this my Spider-Man animation blueprint. If we double click and open this up, it should take us to this animation graph, and this output pose controls the final animation that our player character will do. If we just right click and look for state machine, and connect from state machine into here, then if we double click and head inside here, go to the asset browser, so here, then drag in our Spider-Man blend space 1D and connect from entry into here. Then if we double click, right click on the speed variable and promote it to a variable. Then click compile. And in the top left corner, our character should be doing their idle animation. So depending on the speed of our player character will depend on the animation that they play. In order to, in order to control this variable, if we go to the event graph, we want to find this try get pawn owner. This will basically get whatever is using this animation blueprint. If we just drag off this return value and look for is valid, this will just make sure that we have a valid reference to whatever is using this animation blueprint. And if we do, then we're just gonna drag off here and look for get velocity. This will get the velocity of this, whatever is using this animation blueprint. And from here, we can drag off and look for vector length. And this will tell us the speed of our character. So if we drag in the speed variable and look for set speed and connect from return value into here and from is valid into here, then if we go compile and save and close this, if I now go back to my content drawer, enter the third person character, enter the blueprints folder, if I open up the third person character and go to the viewport, if I just select this mesh, we want to go to mesh here and just change this with the character mesh that you've imported so for me, it's the Spider-Man mesh. And then for the animation mode, we want use animation blueprint, then select the animation blueprint that we just made. So it's called Spider-Man animation blueprint. And if I just go compile, save and close this. Now if I go play, my animation blueprint will automatically calculate what speed my player character is at and play the relevant animation. So if I move, my player character will start playing their running animation. There are a couple things we can fix. When my player character transitions between their idle and their walking animation, it looks kind of snappy. In order to fix that, if you go over to your character's blend space 1D, open it up, and in asset details, if you look for sample, and we want this one, sample smoothing, and if you just make this weight speed around seven, go save. You may need to play around with this value. The higher you make this value, the faster it's gonna transition between the different states. So if I just go play, and I now move. When it transitions between my character's idle and running animations, it's a lot smoother. 
let's say I made the value really low, then when it transitions between these animations, it's going to be kind of slow. So if I make this 0.1, go save, close, and play this. When it transitions, it's going to be very slow. So you may just need to play around with that value to find a value which works with your character. But I think 7 should be good in general. And then there's one more thing we can do with our character. Right now, it doesn't have any jumping animations. It looks kind of weird. So I'm going to go over how we can set up some jumping animations for our player character. If we go back to our character's animation blueprint, and we want to go to the Spider-Man Blend Space 1D, go to the new state machine, so out of this blend space, then if you drag in your character's jumping up animation, we want the character's full A loop animation. So this is the animation your player character will play when it's just falling through the sky. Then we want our player character's jumping down animation. We're going to connect from the Spider-Man Blend Space 1D to the jumping up. We'll connect from the jumping up to the full A loop. And we'll connect from the full A loop to the jumping down. And we'll connect from the jumping down back to our Blend Space 1D. So if our player character is in its idle slash running animation, if my player character is ever in the air, we'll make it play the jumping up animation. So if we double click and head inside here, this represents the condition that needs to be true in order for my player character to enter their jumping up animation. If you just right click on this and promote it to a variable and call it is falling. Then if you go back out, in order for our player character to transition between the jumping up animation and the full A loop animation, if we head inside here, right click and look for time remaining and we want time remaining jumping up or whatever your animation is called. When the time remaining of our jumping up animation is less than 0.1, will allow our character to transition into their full link animation. If I go out of this, in order for my player character to transition between their full link animation to their landing animation, if we head inside here, we want to drag in our is full link variable. And if this is not true, so look for not boolean, then we'll allow our character to play its jumping down animation. Then in order for our player character to transition between its jumping down animation back to its normal blend space animation, we will just right click here and go time remaining jumping down when the time remaining of our jumping down animation is less than 0.1 we will allow our player character to transition back to their normal blend space animation so we can just compile and save this the only thing we need to do is tell the game when our player character is falling so if we go back to our event graph we want to just drag off this try get pawn owner and look for get movement component and if we just drag off here and look for is falling, this will basically tell the game when our pawn is falling in the air. We just want to drag in our is falling variable and look for set is falling and connect from here into here. And this will let the game know when our player character is in the air. So now I go compile, save and close this. If I go play and I now press the spacebar button, my player character will play their jumping up animation, then their full A loop animation when they're in the air. And then I'll play the jumping down animation when my player character lands on the ground. So with this, we have created a simple animation blueprint for our player character.